Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein. This is the second part of uh, Feynman's Lost Lecture. I just want to summarize where we are <clears throat> at this point. We can create an ellipse, like this ellipse here. And the way we did it is uh, we made a circle, the center F, as this green circle out here. Uh, we picked a random point on the circle, which I called H. Uh, we also have this random other point, F prime. We connected H to F prime found the perpendicular bisector of that line, and then saw where that perpendicular bisector intersected radius F H. As you can see, when I move this around, that point P does trace out an ellipse. And the reason why this works is because uh, F P H is the radius of the circle. Um, H P and F P are congruent. And uh, since FP and PH equals the radius, FP and PF prime together also equals a constant, which is the radius, and that's what makes something an ellipse. But there's something more I want to say about this, something special about this, this line, this perpendicular bisector of HF. Uh, that line appears, at least when I move it around, to be a, a tangent line. And... Uh, um, it actually, it, it is a tangent line, and I want to convince you of that. Um, this is a tangent line. P is the point of tangency. The reason why P has to be the point of tangency is if I take any other point on this perpendicular bisector, let's call it Q. Here's Q on the perpendicular bisector. I want you to notice that Q being on the perpendicular bisector uh, that means that FQ plus QH, this kind of jagged FQ to QH, is bigger than FH, which is a, a straight line going from F to H. So going straight from F to H is shorter than going F to Q and then Q to H. So FQ plus QH in this case is, uh, is 10.93. But remember, QH is the same as QF prime. So the combined from Q to F plus Q to F prime is bigger than um, let's say P to F plus P to F prime. And that means this Q point is not on, not only is it not on the ellipse, but it's not inside the ellipse either because uh, that combined distance always has to be bigger than the radius of the circle. So because of that, this thing is uh, a tangent line. That will become important later. So here's where we are. If we have a circle, and we have a center of the circle, we have some point that's not the center of the circle, and some point that's on the circle. Um, or if I have a radius from F to, to H like this, if I connect H to F prime, and I take the perpendicular bisector of H F prime, um, intersect that with P, I'll have um, a, t a line that's, a, a point that's on an ellipse, and also that, um, that perpendicular bisector itself will be a tangent to the ellipse. And these things will become important later. But now we're going to shift gears and go into some uh, physics, namely with Sir Isaac Newton. So one of Newton's laws is the, the law of inertia. It basically says that if uh, an object is set into motion, it will uh, tend to stay in motion unless acted upon by some sort of external force. So here's a planet. It has an initial push, and it moves. And unless something causes it to change directions or, or stop moving, it's going to continue going on forever at that exact same speed. Now here's a more complicated situation. I've got my planet. Um, and I've got this sun here. And uh, this planet starts moving. And at this point, the sun is not exerting any force. So imagining the sun just doesn't exert force at all, the planet would move from A to B. And then it would go from B to C in the same amount of time. If the, if the sun was not exerting any force, it would get from A to B in a period of time and then from B to C in the, uh, in the next period of time. Now, one thing to uh, observe is that if I made triangle SAB and triangle 
SB lowercase c, those two triangles would have the same area. And it's not that obvious in, in looking at it that, that they'll have the same area, but uh, they will because they both have the same length bases. And if I take the entire picture and, and rotate it, uh, you'll be able to see that if I take the entire picture and rotate it, you'll be able to see that not only do they have the same bases, A, B, and B, C are the same length, but their heights are, are, are the same as also, because the height would be the sort of perpendicular distance from S down perpendicular to the, this, this uh, line A, B, C. So those, uh, those two triangles would have the same area. And I could actually, with a uh, sketch pad, pretty quickly measure uh, triangle interior. I could actually see the area of, uh, of the top triangle, 7.45, and the area of this triangle here, just to confirm, struct triangle interior measure area. That's also 7.45. So those two areas are the same. Now, to simplify this model, this sun here is going to start uh, exerting a force and sort of attracting uh, the planet. But it's not going to do so continuously. It's going to do so in, a, in a, what's called an impulse model. By that, I mean the, the planet's going to move. Uh, the planet's going to move to B. And then, at that moment, the sun is going to emit like a pulse that's going to change the direction of the planet. And here's the way that works. So at this moment, there's this, um, there's this pulse. And what, uh, sorry, what happens here with this pulse is that the planet is deflected. It, no, it, without the pulse, it would have gone from capital B to lowercase c. Uh, but with this pulse, what happens is that the planet, it, it wants to go from B to C, but it also is getting pulled towards the sun in this direction from B to S. So what happens is that it ends up going sort of diagonally. And we have something called the parallelogram rule, which basically means that if I were to create a parallelogram, like this, and I'll just clean up this parallelogram a little bit. So here's the parallelogram. And what Newton says is that the, the course the planet will take is not going to go to lowercase c anymore, but instead it's going to go along the diagonal here. I'm going to call this capital C. And the planet actually ends up going in this direction. So this is what causes the planet, in a sense, to at least go around the sun at all. This pulse happens, and the, the size of the pulse is this, this line segment over here. Um, I'll call this F for, for force. So BF is sort of the force, and, and, and that force, if it were smaller or bigger, would make a different thing happen. So let's say the force just happened to be about this size. The In one hand, it's being directed B towards F. It's also trying to go from B to lowercase c, and it ends up going diagonally. It ends up going to C in that time interval.